All right, buddy, it's Tyler here at the Highlander Summit Signature Event. Check in with now your number one seed going to the playoffs. It is 2115P. This is Peekaboo coming in out of California. Peekaboo had a phenomenal uh, overall design and composition of their robot here. Their ball retention, by the way, really locks in. So I can't wait to see, dive more into this robot here and kind of just go through these different mechanisms and maybe see the functionality of this little guy here. We'll find out what it does coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Daniel, let's dive right into this robot. Talk to me more about the ball retention and why it's been so important and successful for your team so far. All right, for ball retention, um, it's these plastic uh, poly flaps here. Um, turn around. And so these flaps are stringed and connected all the way over here. They're string routed to these horns over here. So when these horns go up, it pulls on the string, which pulls the plastic pieces in. And I kind of just blocks the balls from going out. And then when these, like that, and then when it deactivates, the piston is going to go down, and then uh, the flaps uh, become loose, and they're, they're able to you know, form uh, any shape they want, and then the balls can just freely slip through. Um, and also, to add on this, uh, to talk about the horns, um, it's actually uh, uneven. This side is shorter, a lot shorter than this side, and the reason we did this is because uh, this side is the, the locking side, so whenever we want to lock into the goal and, like, try to maintain the, the center control. We use this side, which locks uh, the balls in, so our robot doesn't move around as much. This side is the D-score side, so whenever like we activate this and drive in from the uh, front or the back of the long goal, we're able, to, we're able to line up more easily. And these are very efficient. They're able to go over the long goal, so we can uh, go over and then pull this down, and this it's, a, it's able to lock or D-score. Now, being that you're using pneumatics for the horns here, and that also is with your ball retention, do you have any concerns in regards to running out of air during a match? Uh, no, usually at the end, uh, we'd end up with like at least like 30 to 40 PSI. Um, but we do use the ball retention a lot, and it is two pistons, but we fill our tank all the way up, and it usually isn't a problem because this is mostly the only pneumatics part that we use. Tanish, let's pass it over and uh, learn more about your uh, intake and ball journey to gone through. One of the things when we were talking about it earlier is uh, your usage of plastic on the robot as well. Too, so talk to me more about the full composition of that. Uh, so basically, over here, as you can see, we uh, use plastic instead of metal. And this is mainly because we want the top of our robot to be lightweight because if it's on, if the weight, because we want the cog to be even. So that's why we put plastic parts here. Uh, in our intake, it's kind of it's just a little basic, as you can see. That we have rubber bands over here, and they just pull the blocks up so we can score on the uh, goals. And yeah, that's the reason why we have uh, plastic parts over here. And it really helps keep our cog balanced so our robot doesn't tip over. And another thing I would like to talk about is this little guy here, Sammy. Um, this is an IQ part, but it's, it's considered dec decoration, so it's fine. Uh, he's kind of like our good luck charm, you know, so it's all good. So in addition to Sammy, what are some other aspects that you think has really led it to success on the field in regards to match strategy overall for your team? Like, what, how has your team performed so well here at Highlander? So I feel like our team's performed so well at Highlander uh, because we have a good match strategy. Going into the game, we did some analysis of the scoring, and we realized if you have full control of both the long goals plus control bonus, then you just win the match. You cannot lose. It's 59% of the points, so it's pretty much really hard to lose. It's like impossible to lose. Do you so. think that strategy will also translate in the playoffs, or does that uh, differ a little bit as you enter playoff competition? Uh, we believe that strategy transfers to the playoffs. However, um, it will definitely be more, we'll try and gear our Autons to fill the long goals more, so it would be easier to maintain and gain control of it as uh, we just would be one step ahead if we were to do that. Ethan, talk to me about your uh, aligner that you're using and how that uh, works, and then we're going to dive a little bit more into your dry base and brain area as well, too. Yeah, so on the back of our robot, um, you can see that we have two aligners, actually, and the reason why we chose to do this was because um, 
because of sizing, right? So from the front of our robot to the back of the robot, we're really close to 18 inches in size, and we couldn't fit like um, a really big aligner like a lot of the other teams here have. So we decided to compensate for this by having two, two aligners, one up here that's um, a V cut out inwards, and a one, out, one down here that's a V cut out um, outwards. And what this does is, is just like, it really helps us um, align easily and smoothly into the goal where this one, um, as we're approaching it, this one helps funnels, funnels, funnel us in and this one secures us into the goal. And uh, about the brain placement and electrical components, um, our brain and battery and as, as well as tank are all found on the bottom of our robot because as Tana said, right, we really wanted to keep this bot lightweight. And a thing about lightweight bots is that if you have the cog really high, it's gonna be extremely easy to tip and uh, and just fall over, right? So we have the brain down here and that really lowers the cog all the way down to the bottom of our bot and it keeps it nice and smooth all for driving. Well, first off, congratulations on being number one seat as we're filming this as you go into playoffs. We can't wait to see how you do here at the Highlander Summoner Signature event. Once again, this is Peekaboo uh, coming in and we can't wait to see uh, throughout the rest of the season how your team continues to grow and evolve. Good luck the rest of the way, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.